Hey guys, I've got another 10 smartphones I wanted to share with you that I'm actually very excited about that are coming out later this year. A lot of these I forgot to mention in my previous video, so I wanted to make another 10. This is all the latest updates on them and everything we know so far. This is going to be such an exciting year for smartphones. So probably the coolest and most futuristic smartphone ever, the Xiaomi Mi Mix, is getting a sequel. So the Xiaomi Mi Mix 2 will be released later this year, and the main change, the biggest change, will be an improvement to the already massive and gargantuan display. So they are actually going to be increasing the ratio of the display on the front of the phone from 91.3 to 93%. That is insane. They're also going to be rounding the corners of the phone a little bit more, and that means more rounded edges on the display which will match a little bit of the Samsung Galaxy S8's style. This phone is already known for having technology that no other smartphone has like the ceramic body or the bone conducting earpiece but the new one is going to take that further. This will be the first smartphone on the market to have a built-in fingerprint reader embedded in the display. That is cool. You'll definitely see this on other smartphones like the iPhone 8 but it'll be on this one first. Now this next one, the icon we know has already been released, the Nokia 3310 Reboot. It's up for pre-order very soon, but officially hasn't been released to the public, so that's why I say I'm very excited for this thing. It's a bit of a disappointment, it doesn't come with the durability the older one is known for, but it pretty much does everything that one did, but better. It now has a camera, an LCD display, 2.4 inches, the updated version of Snake, colorful, sleek looking body, so I definitely will be buying one, picking one up, testing it out, and it's a phone a lot of people are looking forward to despite the lack of durability. Now after kicking Microsoft to the curb, Nokia is looking to make a major comeback, first by switching to Android. They got bought out by HMD Global, and they're actually making some very good choices, bringing back the Nokia 3310, having some low to mid-tier phones, which they released to MWC. The only thing that's missing is a high-end flagship, and that's what we're going to get with the Nokia 8 series. So this is a concept from Concepts Creator that showcases what this phone could look like. It's officially in the works to be released very soon, with specs featuring the Snapdragon 835, which should be an epic combination with Nokia, 120 and 256 gigabytes of storage and a 5.5 inch display. And seeing just how far Nokia got with their smartphones when they were partnered with Microsoft, it's easy to believe that the camera on this thing is going to be amazing. Uh, they had some examples that were over 40 megapixels uh, with some great glass in them, so it's really going to be a very capable camera. It's going to be an awesome phone, probably quite durable, and I'll definitely have to pick one up to test out. So Nokia is making a major comeback, and this is going to be their game plan. Player. Although Nokia isn't a very popular brand here in America, in other countries this is going to be on top of the lists. And this is a brand I don't think I've ever mentioned on my channel, MyZoom. With their new Pro 7 series, they're looking to copy the Mi Mix with an edge-to-edge -edge display. And this was a company that was known for copying Apple, both their technology and designs in the past. Now they're trying to excel past it. With this new phone, it'll be a completely edge-to-edge -edge display smartphone with some awesome new charging technology. They actually released their new super high efficiency charging and they managed to promise the world to everyone with this charging technology. They managed to get a 98% efficiency where other competitors aren't quite as good. They're right around 90%. So this means you can charge your phone fully in just 20 minutes. That is insane. And they also do say that this actually extends the cycles that your battery can take. So you can go up to 800 now. That's amazing, actually. Not only is it faster, it lasts longer, and it does fix fast charging's flaw, and that is heat production. When you charge your phone, it actually gets very, very hot under quick charge. With this new technology, it runs pretty cool when you're quick charging, around 100 degrees, whereas competitors' phones heat up to 110 about. And a phone I don't usually talk about on my channel, the LG V series. So it's already in its third generation. The V30 should be coming out later this year. Now the LG G6 is obviously going to be the foundation for this phone, but the V30 in general has been a more high-end version of the G6. More audio focused, more camera focused, the display is usually better, but this time around it's going to be hard to beat because the LG G6 does have that much larger display. The V30 is rumored to get rid of its dual display setup and just incorporate this one. Of course it will get the Snapdragon 835, one of the biggest flaws of this phone 
phone is that it has that slow 821 processor and it will have a dual camera setup. So pretty much everything that the LG G6 is, but a little bit more professional. I'm sure they'll clean the design up a little bit. I don't really know what other changes they'll make to it, but they will have a 4D AC converter setup inside. So you'll get some really great audio output out of this phone. And the Huawei P10. Do forgive me for the pronunciation. I'm not very familiar with this brand, but these are the same guys that brought us the Pixel 6P, which to many people, wait, Pixel, no, the Nexus 6P, which to many people was considered a very, very great phone. Still getting some software support even to this day. So this latest phone basically gives you everything, and I mean everything you could ever possibly want out of a phone. These guys try to eliminate the possibility that their phone is missing a feature. It does have the dual lens setup, it has a beautiful, massive display, the form factor of the phone, is quite good. It's a flagship that just incorporates everything you'd ever need out of a phone. It also does have a new Kirin 2.4 gigahertz processor that is octa-core. The lower end cores are 1.8 gigahertz. It has six gigabytes of RAM, a dual SIM card tray, and one of those slots being a micro SD slot as well, in case you don't need the dual SIM functionality. Of course, it does have Leica glass. This thing is just amazing. It also even has an infrared sensor in a massive 3,750 milliamp battery. Most amazing of all is that the front facing camera has autofocus, really focusing on the cameras on that one. So next up is an unannounced Oppo phone. So they actually did uh, release this phone, sort of a prototype that they showed off at MWC. So it's not officially a smartphone yet, but it will be. What they did demo was a technology that's actually really, really creative and amazing. Something we haven't seen on smartphones before, and that's the ability to get five times optical zoom. Not digital, but real zoom. The solution for it is to stack the lenses sideways in a periscope fashion. This uh, technology was actually inspired by periscopes. So we will be seeing this in a future Oppo phone, but for now, it's just a technology that they did show off, and I was so impressed by it. I really, really wanted to show you guys this. It's actually quite incredible as you know technology is pretty much plateaued on phones we don't really often see stuff like this and like steve jobs said you bet your ass they patented this the description from uh, the official company was that they aggressively patented this technology i mean i would if i was them it's so unique now here's a smartphone that's not officially even out it's been announced but it's already winning awards so it was voted the best new smartphone at mwc 2017 this thing was just announced and yes, it is Sony's latest flagship, something I don't cover enough because these phones can be quite incredible. These phones aren't popular in America, I promise. I haven't seen a single person using one of these, but on a trip to Europe, I have seen many, many over there, so I could see why they're so popular. Now, this is a smartphone with a 5.46 inch display that has a 4K resolution. Not the first one Sony has released with 4K, but certainly quite impressive when most smartphones have QHD displays. It's going to feature the Snapdragon 835, and it's going to have a rear camera with an impressive 19 megapixel resolution. Not only that, it will feature 960 frames per second video recording on a smartphone. Quite impressive. Wow. As cool and capable as this phone is, it's not going to be very popular here in America because of the support, especially because the fingerprint sensors come disabled here in America for whatever reason. It will come in many colors and arrive late spring in all other areas. And Motorola, these guys aren't dead yet. They're actually bigger than HTC with a 5% market share versus 3.2. Now they will be releasing their new flagship, the Moto Z 2017 edition, and with it, 12 new mods on the back. Unknown if they'll be compatible with the older version, but this is a phone that's very thin, known for its modularity. You'll be able to upgrade it with a whole bunch of uh, you know, cool mod cases, and it's gonna get an upgrade with the new processor, of course, and to keep the same slim design. And what? The Samsung Galaxy Note 7 is getting released again? Not here in America, but a latest rumor just a few hours before making this video claims the Note 7 is actually coming back in select markets. It was previously denied by Samsung, but now it seems Sam Mobile is reporting that this phone is indeed coming back first to South Korea. So they will be refurbishing these phones, you know, fixing the battery issue and selling them. They have 2.5 million units that are ready to be sold, of course, at a discount. But still, it's a great phone. And lastly, I just wanted to give you an update on the Samsung Galaxy S8. This is the next big flagship we're going to be seeing here just a little. So the official street release date has been pushed back by a week for apparently no reason. Actually, first reported by Venture Beat, they said that it will be pushed back from April 21st to April 28th. Of course, Samsung is taking quality control very seriously, and this could play into why they're doing that. 
More recent leaks have shown this thing actually in video. Very, very sleek design. That display goes all the way up. Lots of picture leaks here. I mean, this thing is going to be so dang clean and good looking. And an official press render has leaked. So from Samsung itself, the real deal. This is it. And the actual date where you'll be able to pre-order this thing has leaked as well, which will be April 10th. Man, this phone is going to be amazing. I am so, so excited to see what Samsung has in store for us. But there it is, guys. That is 10 more smartphones that are coming out later this year. A lot of less known brands, but still, the technology in some of these phones is amazing. Competition, as always, is very good. Where one company excels, it's going to force another company to work a little harder to beat them. So competition is great for us. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Peace.